All right, let's get to some feedback Friday, and I want to begin with a really cool and inspiring note. Now, when I tell you what the subject matter is, at first you're going to think, what is inspiring about this? But just hang tough here, new kids on the block. Hang tough. All right? This past weekend, I attended my very first Drag Queen Storytime Hour, and I left inspired. Now, let me pause. All right? In almost every context, when a text or an email or a blog uh, or a social media post begins with this sentence, it it's downhill from there, like way downhill, like right, like David French downhill. Yeah, as far downhill as you can go, like hell. Okay, but again, hang in there. But it wasn't the show that inspired me. Rather than polluting the minds and souls of innocent children, the drag queens and other demonic performers read their stories and performed their acts before a solemn, resolute, and prayerful crowd of adult Christians. Listen to this, guys. This is one of the most badass things I have seen in my whole career. Not just on this issue, like in my entire career. This is as badass as it gets. To be sure, these good Christians came to the event not to be entertained, but to stand in the gap between those who want to drag all kids into their own demonic realm and the innocent children dragged to such a wicked event by their sick moms. Here's how it went down. After the announcement of one of these drag queen storytime hours to be held at the Marshall Public Library in Pocatello, Idaho, on a Saturday in February, several pastors of different churches and denominations organized a coalition how good and pleasant it is when we dwell together in unity and praise the Lord, the psalmist says. Several pastors of different churches and denominations organized a coalition of willing grown-ups to come early, occupy all the seats. When my wife and I arrived a full 30 minutes before showtime, all but four seats were occupied And soon every seat and much of the standing room was taken entirely up by this Christian army. A few minutes later, two woke moms squeezed into the back of the room with four kids in tow. The show was about to begin when one of the moms not so quietly complained to her children how sad it was for them to not be in the front and how difficult it was for them to sit in the sit all the way in the back. She entirely missed the point. Two minutes into the show, as planned, one of the pastors explained to the library director, listen to this, guys, this is only getting better, man. This is as badass as it gets. And now, okay, that was just the first wave, okay? That was just the first wave. Now comes the heavy artillery. Listen to this. This is, do we have Rocky music? <laughs> I mean, this this man right here, okay, Two minutes into the show, as planned, as planned, as planned, at a plan. One of the pastors explained to the library director how the maximum occupancy of the room was clearly violated by the crowd size. The director, a well-trained bureaucrat, was forced by his own rules To clear the room of all of those not seated, including all the woke moms and their kids in the back who didn't have seats. The moms and woke supporters were forced to therefore leave the event. This has got to be a freaking movie, man. Are you kidding me? There were 10 to 15 other children who never even made it into the room in the first place. Kids would not be partaking of any of this debauchery. The performers, void of any child targets or their parents in the room, nonetheless persisted in their show. They were not happy, but I guess they stupidly and arrogantly thought that they could teach the Christian crowd a thing or two about their sickness. Their two book readings and one ukulele sing-along were met with silent, defiant defenders of values and God's commandments. The audience did not applaud Aaron, get me some cigarettes, okay? I, I, I mean, this is, this is the hottest thing I've ever read in my life right here. And when this is done, I'm going home to find out what the wife is doing, okay? The audience did not applaud, did not sing along, did not participate. Instead, they quietly read their Bibles, bowed in prayer, and thereby peacefully protected 
children. It was inspiring. Yeah, it is. I'm reading this like for the fourth time, and I'm fired up like I'm reading it for the first. It was spiritual. Despite the demons reading and relating immoral and vile alternatives to God's law, the warmth and comfort of God's love filled the room and overpowered them. I was deeply moved. Our cause, God's cause, requires action and dedication. As you mentioned last week on your show, do not call out the demons unless you are ready and committed to take the battle to them down with your swords. Showing up to these battlegrounds will give us small wins at first, but it will also embolden the demons to build their forces, sharpen their tactics, and increase their fervor. We need to overpower them. As as Elisha said to his servant when it looked like they were facing an insurmountable army, fear not, for they that be with us are more more than they that be with them. Elisha asked the Lord to open his servant's eyes so that he too could see the multitudes of horses, chariots, and warriors standing at the ready to win the day. We are in a war. It is indeed crazy versus normal. That was Sarah Huckabee's line last week. Better put, it's demonic versus God-fearing. We should be comforted by Elisha's account. Indeed, more be with us than be with them. However, we must engage. We must act. I pray we will do that. This event gives me hope. That is from Ronald M. Nate, and I love this too. P.H.D. Ronald M. Nate, Ph.D. in Rexburg, Idaho. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.